In this example, let's consider computing the deflection of a beam that's subjected to a point moment m hat. So we're going to apply a point moment at a distance a from the wall, so the beam is cantilevered, and we'll assume that ei is constant, then the overall length of the beam is l. And we'll try and determine the deflection uh, field for this beam. Now, the first thing that we're going to need to do is kind of figure out how we're going to represent the load here. So if we think about what it means to say that we're applying a, a point moment, that means that we're applying loads to the beam that result in a net moment of value m hat and that that application of that load is localized to this location x equals a. And one way of doing that is to apply say a constant force applied in the vertical direction just to the left of a and a constant vertical force just to the right of a. So we have distributed loads plus and minus let's say epsilon over 2 on either side of the value of a. So it's localized, epsilon's a small number, and we just have to set up the value for this distributed load, so the, the magnitude of it, so that I get a net moment of m hat. So let's just sort of compute first what we need for a mo net moment of unit value one. This is kind of like what we did with the delta functions before for concentrated point forces. So if I set the height of the distributed load to four over e squared, both to the left and the right, the net moment of this function here is going to be one and I'll call that function g epsilon of x so that's a distributed load applied localized to the point a whose net moment is equal to one and then notice the net force of this distributed load is zero because it's got the same value upwards as it does downwards okay so notice first of all that the integral of g of epsilon is equal to zero, so that's net zero force, and then the moment about the point a, so x minus a g epsilon, if I integrate that, that's going to give me one. So no net force, unit moment. And to define a point moment, I'm going to consider the fact of taking the limit as epsilon goes to zero. So epsilon equals the zero of g epsilon, I'm going to call it del prime, uh, and that's going to be how I represent point moments. And the prime actually means derivative here, because if you look at this graph here that I have for g epsilon, it's exactly the derivative of the graph that I used to develop the expression for a point force, which was the triangular load localized to the point A. So, so point moments are actually represented by the derivative of the delta function. So integrating the point moment expression del prime just gives me delta, the, the direct delta function. Okay, so we can now proceed on our problem here. So the equilibrium equation is going to be EI for derivatives of V is equal to Q. And in this case, Q, the distributed load, is going to get, be given to me by m hat times the derivative of the delta function located at the point A. And now the rest of the procedure is the same as we had before. We go ahead and we'll integrate this equation. We integrate it four times. When we first integrate the derivative of the delta function, we're going to end up with the delta function, so and we'll end up with a constant also. Integrate the delta function, we get the step function, and pick up another constant. When we integrate that one time, we'll pick up the Macaulay bracket, and if we integrate again, we'll get the Macaulay bracket squared. Okay, now we picked up four constants of integration, c1, 2, 3, and 4, and we have to eliminate those with the boundary conditions, so we need the boundary conditions for a cantilevered beam. And on the left side, it's built in, and that means that there's no deflection and no rotation. So v and v prime are equal to zero to x equals zero. So the coordinate frame is, is the standard one here, x measured from the wall. And out at the right end of the beam, it's free. So there's no moment and no shear out there. So the boundary conditions are v of zero equals zero, v prime is zero equals zero, m at l is equal to zero, which means that the second derivative times ei of the deflection is equal to zero. And the shear force is equal to zero at x equals l, which means that minus ei, the third derivative of the deflection evaluated at l is equal to zero. So we can apply these boundary conditions then to try and determine the constants. So let's go ahead and first use the deflection at zero equals zero, and that tells me immediately that c4 has to equal zero. If I use the fact that the rotation is zero at x equals zero, I see that c3 has to equal zero. Now, if I use the moment condition at x equals l, I'm going to find out that m hat times one 
plus C1L plus C2 equals zero. So that's an equation in two unknowns, C1 and C2. So we'll just kind of leave that one. We'll go, try and determine, maybe get another expression, and that will allow us then to solve for the constants here. So if I go ahead and use the shear condition, I see that C1 is going to equal zero. So when I evaluate delta of L minus A, that's going to be zero because delta is localized to A. So I'm just going to get C1 equals zero. Well, knowing what C1 is, I can plug that into that expression I got for the moment at L equals zero. And that tells me then that C2 is going to be equal to minus M hat. So now I know what all my constants are. Three of them are zero, and one of them is going to be minus M hat. So I can put this together, and I have a final expression for the deflection of the beam here. And that tells me that V of x is equal to 1 over EI, M hat times the Macaulay bracket, x minus a squared over 2 minus m hat x squared over 2. So that gives me the final expression for the deflection of the beam here. Um, it's useful to go ahead and plot that so we can expand out our expression for the deflection here. So it comes to me in two pieces because of the Macaulay bracket. So for values of x less than a, the first term here is going to be 0 and I just have the second term of minus m hat x squared over 2 divided by ei. And for values of x greater than a, I, the first term picks up into the expression here. So if I simplify things a little bit, then I get minus m hat xa plus m hat a squared over 2. So you'll notice that that is a straight line. And I've gone ahead and, and plotted that up here at the top. And you can see that I have some quadratic portion here from 0 to a. And then from a onwards, I have a straight line uh, behavior of the beam. So being straight line, that means that the curvature out there is equal to zero. And if we go ahead and make a plot of the moment, which is EIV double prime, using the constants that we determined, we see that the moment is constants minus m half from x equals zero all the way out to a. And then from a out to l, it's equal to zero. So we end up with a constant value of the curvature here, namely the constant value being 0, because the moment is equal to 0. Recall that EI V double prime is equal to M. So if M is 0, then that implies that V double prime is equal to 0, which implies that V, the deflection, is linear.